Hello, all of you beautiful, sexy human creatures. Nanu, nanu. Live long and prosper. <laughs> Supposed to change colors. You probably can't see it in this light. I got two back there. There are my running lights for the mothership center of light for all you mothers and fathers out there. Welcome to the show. Hello, everyone in the room. The first thing that is on my heart is to say thank you to Kelly Curtis. Excuse me, what? Thank you to Kelly Curtis and Cinnamon. Why? Kelly is one of the biggest supporters of my work. Nothing else needs to be said. Thank you, Kelly. She's always sharing my heart. Hello, Lee. Hello, Poxy. Kristen Davis and her beautiful boys. Adana, I hope things are well with you. If not, I said we would do a follow-up. Doesn't mean things are not well, but hope you're well in that situation. Mabel, hi Mabel, Fimple Calhoun, Charlotte, Paul Crum, Patricia, hi Patricia, where's Richard? Give him a chugger for me. <clears throat> Beth, Ames, see if I can pronounce this right. Dufran, Dufran Headlight Restoration. Let's see who Facebook says is here in this other way in. And you have been named. So hello to all you sexy human beings. Said differently. Hello all of you aliens. Are you sure about that Keith? Am I an alien? Oh you are an alien. That's a fact. It's going to be my task. To bring that through. Tonight's presentation on Center of Light TV is Initiation, Integration, and Graduation. I'm going to explain why you are an alien. <laughs> you are a human because of your alienness. You little extraterrestrial you. <laughs> I'm just having a glorious time. I love these, this subject. And I get the feeling tonight's subject is going to be just full of information, but also fun for me. I'm just, I don't know why I'm just being giddy. Hello, Karen Ronando. Sandy, hello, beautiful Sandy. It's been quite a few years, darling, since I've seen you. Hope things are well with you. September 21st to 22nd, Memphis, Tennessee, at the Agri International Center in Cordova, Memphis. Four Point Spiritual Expo is going to take place. I'm going to be a keynote speaker. Larry Flaxman, Discovery Channel, Ancient Aliens, going to be a keynote speaker. Dr. Rita Louise, Powerhouse She Is, going to be a keynote speaker. Lynette Marie, Holistic Health Eating, Preventative Medicine, is going to be there. Readers, spiritual teachers, best-selling authors, everywhere. Spiritual speakers all day long. There are four keynote speakers, and I happen to be one of them. Gemstones, Light Therapy, Sound Therapy. Touch therapy, vibrational therapy, stone smith, stones. Every kind of spiritual vending booth you can imagine. But it's not about, hey everyone, let's go hang out at this spiritual fair and look at some cool stuff and hear some cool stuff. It's about contributing and being involved. Victoria Smith is taking this spiritual fair exposition to another level. I love what she is doing. I have I had some intuition, psychic hits about the success of this exposition. If you're not from Memphis, get in your car, invite a couple of your knucklehead friends, take a road trip to Memphis, Tennessee. Come a night early. Come out and watch me play music. I play music all over the city all the time. We get up early. We go eat some breakfast. You can buy me breakfast. <laughs> And then we head over to the fair. $20 for both days, $15 per day. Sunday is going to be, um, let's see if I can come up with the right word at short notice, is going to be a speaker spiritual panel. I am on that panel. And everyone's welcome to be a part of this panel on the Sunday, the second day, the last event of the spiritual fair. It's going to consist of Hand-selected people. I'm blessed, fortunate to be one of those people. We're going to talk about how as a group of teachers, 
we can come together and make this thing even more powerful with more of an impact to create a greater vision capacity so we can exponentiate the healing of the world sooner. Hello, Linda. Hello, Steve Stone. Hello, Jessica. To, right now, I should be doing an interview with Madra Gale Little on what is the ascension that's happening now, as it has been deemed. It does go back to Christ's ascension, but we're speaking currently, or we're going to speak currently. That was canceled due to Madra Gale having some technical issues because Keith, I use this software all the time and for my personal work to do readings and counseling and it's just not working today. So it is what it is. We will reschedule with Madra soon. Tomorrow on Center of Light Radio, Robert Wagoner, best-selling author, very popular all over this globe, or oh, Flat Earth. Did you know that Flat Earthers have followers all around the globe. <laughs> but he's very popular all around the world with lucid dreaming. We've all had those lucid dreaming experiences when you know you are present in the experience and you know you have a body laying on the bed. We've all had them. If you have not, contact me. I will help you to become aware of that which happens to you every night, every night. Are you aware that they are happening? Again, tonight's presentation is initiation, integration, and graduation. This is going to be ridiculously fun. In this group forum, you will see some links. Contact me when Keith goes live. My YouTube channel, please subscribe. Donate link my work so I can stay in my work, do my work as I do pro bono. Only if we had pro share, then we'd have pro share and Sonny Bono. <laughs> What's up, Drew Lancaster? It's good to see you, brother. So tonight we are going to be speaking about initiation, integration, and graduation. You are a star seed. Everyone really is a star seed but star seed from present vantage point. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? I hear you. Look out in the world and see what's happening. What's happening in the world is crazy, isn't it? So on the same level of crazy of what's happening in the world and the level of, on the same level of cosmic activity is happening in the cosmos. And the earth, this little grain of sand on a cosmic beach is still part of the cosmic beach. So what is happening on Earth is not about the Earth. What is happening on Earth is cosmic. It is so cosmic, it has everyone's attention in the cosmos, all these ETs and extraterrestrials, even the bad ones. It has everyone's attention because they want a piece of your action. No other experiment has been done like this in the history of infinity. Human birth is the apex of God's creation. Chew on that stick of spiritual gum. How does that taste in your mouth? Lucky are you that you are a forerunner for cosmic change. Manifested on the earth in what you see when you look in the mirror, you. That is your obligation. <laughs> that is your duty. That is your responsibility now that you've been told. It's also been a part of the reason you have been born. In your own way, are you expanding yourself from the center of your being? I am in my Father, my Father's in me, and I am in you, said Master Christ. Are you taking that divine, galactic, stellar, cosmic energy of the Christ that sits at the seat of your soul and are you expanding it out into the cosmos as you were asked by your teacher? I'm not saying you are, I'm just asking a question. And I hope you are. And I hope that I'm lighting a very serious fire in your soul. That's what tonight's presentation is about. Initiation, 
integration, and graduation. I am a soul made of light here on this earth to use my God-given abilities to bring about unity and the expansion and global peace of humanity. Are you with that program? Center of Light TV, Center of Light Federation, Center of Light. I am the Center of Light. It's not just a title for my shows and my presentations. You are the Center of Light because within you is the Center of Light. My presentations are never to offend nor frighten, but to awaken and enlighten. Lots of people are scared. They won't tell you they are, but they are. This is the purpose of my work is to empower you, initiation, integration, and graduation. This is not some spiritual cliche thing. I'm jumping on some train of the bandwagon. I've been doing this for 30 years, diligently, with all of my muster, all of my guts, all of my nuts, all of my sweat, blood, and tears. I understand the language that many don't. I'm here to be a translator. Center of Light. I'll be right back with a powerful presentation. You alien you. You are human because first you are an extraterrestrial. See you shortly. I wonder 
I'm on the runway to let an alien ship know it can take off or land. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Center of Light TV, Initiation, Integration, and Graduation. It's time to get down to the business. I want to acknowledge who just arrived. I love acknowledging people. It's what I do, why I do it. Robert Garrett, singing, songwriting, foo. I've been knowing Rob for quite a few years now, working, to use a word, with him, producing his music. He and I, he has an album coming out soon, if we can ever finalize that one. When he and I is going to work on another one again soon. Oh, my God, this boy is sexy. Drew Lancaster. Hi. Carmen Shasha. Debbie Grassberger. All right, let's get down to business. Uh, Callan Ronaldo said she's a menopausal alien. So I'm assuming the word menopause is that you're at the stage of your life where men are on pause. <laughs> Tonight we're speaking about initiation, integration, and graduation. Let me look in this part of the Facebook room. Linda's still here. Charlotte's still here. Adana, Lee, Callan, Renando, Kelly. Shasha. What did I mean earlier when I mentioned that you are a human because first you are an extraterrestrial? Alien is such it's such a overused word, it loses the magic. Alien. In fact, the whole the word is wrong. There's nothing right about that word. Well, yeah, it is, Keith, because it's right because we're here and there, there. There's nothing right about that world. Calling people from Mexico illegal aliens. It's nothing right about that word. Nothing right about the idea. You can argue with me all you want. Go sit in the corner and be mad and pout, and pout or stomp your feet. No one is alien. How easy is that? And you know it. Everyone knows it. But they want to piss and vinegar match and they want to fight. Your brothers south of you are not illegal aliens. And your cosmic brothers and sisters above you are not aliens either. It's all the divine family expressing itself in infinite forms. Me, you, them, we, they, all of it. It's all an expression of the divine God is omnipresent. Takes the fight out of it, doesn't it? Jimmy Mancini's in the house, a singer-songwriter, sexy man right there. So you are an extraterrestrial. It sounds a little better than alien. Alien creates this separation, a horrible separation, a great rift, a great rent, a great divide between your brothers and sisters in Mexico, illegal aliens, and your cosmic family above in the heavens. It creates a horrible divide. There's a us and there's a them. There's none of that. So the reason you are extraterrestrial first, you are human. The reason you are human is because you are an extraterrestrial first. Okay, what does all this mean, Keith? <laughs> if you think that the Earth was created 13.4-ish, whatever the science is, <laughs> or the guesstimation because of their instruments, if they're calibrated to the hilt, there could be some gray area, but let's say that would be true. You think you're 13.4 billion years old as a human? Well, you, you, whatever age you are, you're human on this earth. But the earth is literally your mother. You came of the, from the flesh of the earth. God's will would be your father. In scripture it says, honor thy father and their mother, your mother. It might mean, could, it is inclusive that you honor your biological mother and father. This is not about the earth. This is divine. So you honor your mother that you will one day transform and dissolve back into. From dust thou art to dust thou shalt return. And also ascend to the Father, as Christ had said. I have not yet ascended to my Father. Don't touch me. 
picture gets painted pretty easy, doesn't it? Connect the dots. It's really easy. It's Nothing is excluded. It's all inclusive. The scripture, what I'm telling you, what you see in the National Enquirer tabloids. Hi, Laurie. Let's see who's here. Laurie Ridgeway, Pamela Beal, all of you alien humans, it's for real. So I don't want to make this presentation about the alien hype and keep doing another presentation like everybody else on the aliens. I want to inform you and give you formation, something to keep you in a formation. Information. You are an alien slash human hybrid. Not only has this been going on 13.4 billion years ago, at least the Earth, and you walk up on the Earth, and this ain't your first time, cowboy. Yeah! Giddy up. Step up and see your lineage. Not only familytree.com, divinefamilytree.yam. You are an alien-human hybrid. This has been happening since infinity. You, we, are living in this linear timeline. It makes sense. My life goes from birth to death. Okay. What did you do before you were slapped into a meat suit? What are you going to do after you leave this meat suit? Are you going to hang out with Jesus or your chosen deity on a park bench while the lion lays down with the lambs and it's a nice breezy day and we have a picnic? Now what? The earth has been created with an intention before time started and long after time went. In fact, that's ridiculous in and of itself. It never started, nor will it ever end. It just is. But humans are the apex of the divine creation. Why are we so special? <laughs> because every being in the universe can aspire to humanhood. But it is only through the human birth that God can be realized. A fish in the ocean is conscious, but it's not conscious of the fact that it's conscious. It changes the game. Jesus was the living example. Heaven on earth, the cross, and look where they intersect. Right there. Heaven on earth. He called you brother. You are the it. It took took seven, give or take, six to eight extraterrestrial civilizations, experiments by the will and by following divine order to a uh, uh, monkey <laughs> with DNA to create the human genome, the human being. Hugh is the Ekankar religion's word for God. Man is of the earth. Hugh, man, human, heaven on earth. This is what this is all about. It ain't about what happened to Jesus 2,000 plus years ago. Jesus and others in the past, all these special deities, came here to manifest this very moment. So really, what scripture is about is you sitting here watching this presentation right now. Not me or anyone who would provide you with the same spiritual manna, the same spiritual sustenance that I'm offering to you this, through this platform. Through the light, the information is being passed. And as a catalyst and a medium and a vessel for what I know I am absolutely solidly connected to, you're being handed your spiritual lineage. All past scripture is about now. It may talk of the past. It may talk about present day vantage point back when. 
it may talk about even further into the future, but it's about right now. We are on the cusp of changing our fate. <clears throat> Initiation, integration, and graduation. Hello, Clanton Von Blaylock. I think we're starting to understand the picture of our lineage and the majesty of who we are. Okay, I hear you, Keith. Who am I? I can't answer that for you. No one can answer that for you. But I can tell you your greatest possibility if you allow it. Allow yourself to be that very star seed of extraterrestrial myth. Well, Keith, I don't want to be a star seed of an extraterrestrial. Well, you already are. Or you can see it in a different way if it helps you to feel better. See yourself as a star seed of the ultra terrestrial, which would be the angelic kingdom. I believe in angels. All right. If that's your faith, then I'm an angel and planted on this earth because I live in love and divine light and spread joy wherever I go. Told you, you are a star seed. I want to read something to you from my soon-to-be new book with John Hunt's publishing, Worldwide Distribution and Publishing. This is what I've been waiting for all of my life, working for. This is an excerpt from it that you are first to hear it here today, right now. It's called Crossing the Bridge to the Soul. We have all heard the saying, time flies when you are having fun. Well, my friend, I can attest to that. Where has it all gone? From my experience, it hasn't passed me by as we normally perceive time to do. It just seems to have vanished. Today, as I am writing this or speaking this, I am grateful to find myself deeper into it infinite space where time is a simple play of divine consciousness from the time i started writing my bestseller the divine principle in 1996 and completing it in 2009 i have learned so much from the wisdom that moved through my vessel for the years that followed i continued to live in the f brilliant light of those teachings which I have no doubt read in me for the next plateau. I consider that phase of my life as the initiation into spirit. Tonight's presentation is initiation, integration, and graduation. <sighs> From the year 2000 to 2014, I was working on a book about my pilgrimage to India to see a divine incarnation by the name of Sathya Sai Baba. The holy man behind me you see in this picture. That book was titled, For the Love of God, A Spiritual Journey. It was the beginning of the rising phoenix within me. Going back to 1996 and coming forward into 2014, I have experienced so much expansion that I almost cannot contain myself. I consider that phase of my life as the integration of spirit. About three and a half years ago, the reason you are watching me do this presentation right here, right now. Hello, Ricky Vito. Shasha says she's an ultra terrestrial. I love it. About three and a half years ago, I was watching over a friend's house while they were in England. One day I was sitting on the sofa in silence, thinking of what I could do to alleviate my boredom. When all of a sudden, that voice from the divine principle says... <laughs> Keith, grab your phone, go sit by the fireplace, turn the video recorder on, and go at it. Immediately, I got up, went over there, sat down on a pillow, and got right to it, not knowing what was about to unfold. The first thing that welled up in my heart was to talk about how you can have it all. After looking into my cell phone and taking some deep, intentful breaths to connect, I could feel that voice begin to fill me inside as it did when I was writing The Divine Principle. For the next few years, 
that presence began to consume me, literally. Since then, I have been doing a live video series, like now, on social media called Center of Light Bursts. These presentations are off the cuff, allowing the voice of my heart to speak. One by one, as people gather in the virtual group, they experience the divine love poured through my vessel into theirs. It is such an amazing, beautiful thing to witness, watching them at every gathering burn with a divine fire for radical transformation. Whew, that hit me hard. After reviewing the playback of my first eight videos, I came to realize that something I was unaware of had begun to occur. I was the one I was the one becoming more and more radically transformed. A new book was already being placed within me. So I contacted my marketing director, Renee Brown. I hired her to transcribe all that came through these sessions, and we began editing the message into book format. Lo and behold, I am now publishing my next literary love, Radical Transformation. This powerful, soon-to-be-released wisdom has led me by hand and heart to the golden door. Entering into the kingdom of the cosmic soul. Being in this heart space daily is what has caused time to not flee from me, but utterly disappear. As I reflect upon the last two years, I realize that this time, the voice has not only come to speak through me, but has come to be with me as me. Yes, the dove of peace has descended into my heart at last, and along with that perching has come the grace of an ever-expanding awareness. This phase of my life I consider the graduation with spirit. Through this declaration, my dedication and vow to you, and my vow to you, let me say that again. Through this declaration, my dedication and vow to you is this. I am my own. You can have it all. I now wear the golden ring on my finger. Symbolic of a divine marriage. I cultivate this relationship at every possible moment. Through my commitment to live a life of service to all. But here's the thing. My olive branch gesture is that you reach for and join me in this sacred union yourself. And when you sincerely intend, intend to do just that, the dove of peace and everlasting light will wipe the cobwebs of time from your mind and the darkness from your vision you too will find yourself crossing the bridge to the soul and reside in the garden at last. The powerful journey you are about to embark upon will take you between the two worlds. It is my intention and vision that the lamplight of my work is your initiation, integration, and graduation. It is my blessing that you will know from bones to soul. This is your homecoming. You are greater than you imagine. You are a cosmic being manifested in what you call this corporal materialized life on this dusty rock. Beautiful blue jewel it is floating in space, hurling through space at thousands of miles per hour, ever-changing, ever-spinning. Everything is bumping into each other at God speeds and taking off to somewhere else to create a new creation. This has been happening a long time. You are a star seed. Seven, eight civilizations got together. And monkey, <laughs> to use a playful word, and brought about the human species. And through your nervous system, nervous system, you have the ability and the greatest capacity as a sentient being in this universe to feel to levels no other sentient being can.
initiation. If you have not been initiated, which you have, consciously and deliberately, you are now. Get down on your knee. I'm knighting you. <laughs> You've been initiated. Now you're conscious. You have been told. Likely, I say most people are integrating. Integrating many experiences. You exist on many experiences. You exist beyond time. It's your task to live in the space here in the heart space that is beyond time. Real simple, isn't it? You're at church right now and it's Sunday at 9 o'clock. It does include Christ. It does include the Buddha. It does include Krishna. It does include your grandmother who's deceased. It does include your child who you love like God. Do you not love your children equally to your love of God? If we don't, maybe that's why the world's children have so much trouble. But also, maybe the reason our world's children have all this trouble is because many people are loving their children like they love God. And if your understanding of God is erroneous, then your loving your children does not separate from that model. Sorry. The truth is not a tincture band-aid nor salve. The truth is a head knock, a ball buster, and an eye opener. The God you believe in is how you treat yourself in the world. End of story. You cannot escape that. Try it. Here's a golden ticket to sit where you need to sit for infinity and figure it out. The God you believe in is the God you are when you treat the world as the master of your life. You believe in punishment, then you punish those who wrong you. You believe in an unconditional loving being that says, my child, there is something called divine order, divine law. And you can't skirt it. You can try until it finally catches up with you. And then the smack on your head, kicking your ass, busting your balls, punching the throat. Graduation. I'm slowly but surely stepping onto that arena. Take a short break. I'm going to be right back. <laughs> and then we're going to get deep into the alien, excuse me, deep into the rabbit hole with the extra and ultra terrestrial nature of who and what you are. So when we grasp our extraterrestrial, ultra-terrestrial nature, it makes it really fucking easy to look to Mexico and to everyone else around the world who wants refuge from all the bullshit. Keith, we just want to keep the bad ones out. The good ones are okay. Welcome to the world of humanity. You can't escape humanity. The good and the, you can find enough bad down your own street. So don't blame it on the rush of people who are escaping their world that is war torn for refuge. And besides, if you're in God's grace, nothing can touch you. And if you're not spiritually aligned, no matter how many illegal aliens you keep at bay, trouble will find you. Don't blame it on other people. Take your own responsibility. You are a star being. Claim your lineage. Until then, you will continue by self-induced choice of not needed suffering. Stick around. You have a choice. Remember that all things are possible. You must choose to be accountable, responsible, enough to believe, and open your heart to receive.
rise above and look at your life And you see the life you live, can you be surprised That it all turned out this way and not the way you planned Welcome back to Center of Light. Tonight we are speaking about initiation, integration, and graduation. I want to move into a deeper level of understanding of what this is really all about. <clears throat> If you are here now watching this presentation or if you're going to watch this presentation in the future, if the realism of what I'm bringing forth is too intense for you because of your spiritual background and the spiritual doctrine that you follow, I understand that. So instead of turning it off, just see me as a movie you went and see in the Malco Theater of this guy just telling this crazy fault story. We have all seen alien movies and went home and everything was fine. Life continued. You don't have to see me as a, an, a non-fiction. You can take this as a fiction. But stick around. You might understand something that creates something of value in your life. Hello, David Raper, my friend. Welcome. <clears throat> <clears throat> Tonight's presentation is initiation, initiation Integration, and Graduation. We are all star seeds. The human species has been made up by ultra and extraterrestrials. So you are human because you are an extraterrestrial. The divine higher plan that flows through all life, throughout the entire universe, even those other people, other beings, has willed forth an idea. And so these extra ultra terrestrials got together and monkeyed Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, Neanderthal, to use a word, just a word play of fun. Monkey with DNA. 
So they got the perfect formula. Even the Bible talks about in Genesis. The giants or the humans created to be slaves, monkeys, right? <clears throat> all into the unfoldment of our evolution now. The Bible, all scripture, all scripture, every scripture across this land is about now. And you are living in this now moment. There are infinite souls waiting in queue, waiting in line for human birth. That's how much of a front seat you have on this roller coaster. You alien, you, or extraterrestrial, ultra terrestrial incarnation. You came from God. That's cosmic. That's beyond cosmic. That's divine. You go back to God. That's cosmic as well. I am the beginning and I am the end. I'm the Alpha and Omega. If you have the Alpha, which is a dot, and the Omega, which is a dot, sounds like two points, doesn't it? But it isn't. You draw a straight line, connect the dots, no pun intended, but yet, connect the dots. And then you have one line, the timeline of your life. I hope you're having the time of your life. This extraterrestrial is. <laughs> nanu, nanu, live long and prosper. What has been happening over the 13.4 billion years on the earth? We went from lower consciousness, if any form of evolution is correct, which I believe. Some people say it's either creationism or evolutionism. You're mistaken. Well, then what is it? If it's not creation versus evolution, what is it? It's both of them. So it creates a third component. Evolution is a very real thing. And if you think it's not, you're deluding yourself. Sounds like powerful words. I will deliver it to you. Less than 100 years ago. No, excuse me. Just over 100 years ago, we had no technology, except the iron horse <laughs> and telegraph. Look at us now. We have evolved. So automatically, you can't argue with evolution as a truth. Can you? Have we not evolved? Well, some people say, well, with the technology, we have devolved. I get your point. We have evolved intellectually over 100 years ago to now. So evolution is real. As above, so below, on forever it will go. It's happening on levels you don't even understand and know, or know about yourself. The earth has evolved. The earth was this goop, stardust that spun and spun and spun and spun and finally coalesced. Molten lava, molten lava, then the earth began to settle and coalesce. And then we had amoeba and blue-green algae in the ocean. Next thing, this thing comes up and it's got its reptilian amphibian. Well, that sounds like evolution. Well, I already agree that evolution is real. But it does not take away the fact of creation. Creation is the spark, the seed that's planted. When you plant a seed in the ground, I have a tomato plant. You plant in the ground, do you think it just sprouts right before your eyes? It doesn't. So a seed has been planted and it takes time to germinate, blossom, grow, and become a full-fledged tree. Tree of Life says, I planted the seed billions of years ago, actually, beyond time. And so it never started, it will never end. And as a full-fledged human, you will germinate, sprout, grow into a full-fledged human being. Human being, not human doing. You are human. Hugh, God, man of the earth, the Christ principle, heaven on earth. If you have ever had a dream experience, I don't mean... <laughs> And you watch a black and white movie this fast in front of your eyes and you wake up and you go, oh, that was a crazy dream. I'm talking about anything that says, oh my God, this seems pretty intense. 
And then you woke up in the morning from your <clears throat> and go, wow, that was a crazy dream. To whatever degree of your consciousness that you have in initiated, integrated, will determine your graduation, whether you actually had a remembering of the starship, your planetary station, or just visiting home. You have. You don't have to like it. It's okay. I'm not here to change your mind. I'm here to in lift your heart. In such a way, your mind will be altered. Many, not only are we all extra or ultra terrestrials, and there's gray over because they begin to dovetail and crossfade. Even the bad ones, the reptilians, the demons, the devils spoken about in the Bible, the bad ones. But there are also non-corporeal dark energies, shadow people, people who are lost. Don't get lost in the noise and the bullshit hoopla of, oh my God, I'm being possessed by a demon. They're a demon in mouth. It's, it's redonkulous. It's subservient, being bowing down to a power other than the divinity that lives in you. Fear is, an actually a, fear is actually a form of worship. If you don't believe me, go to Webster's Dictionary and look up the word fear. It says reverence, awe, paying homage to something other than the Christ principle, the Buddhic principle, the love principle, the compassion principle that lives in you. This started so long ago. These extra ultra terrestrials are watching over their investment. What do I mean by investment? You are their star children. And many of those higher evolved extra ultra terrestrials are in the same life for thousands upon thousands of years. That's why we are their children. Many of us are parents. Whether you have earth children or not, you very, may very well be a parent. To some child that was born on a starship or on a planetary station when you were taken one night, not violating your free will, that is not what I am talking about tonight. I'm talking about a contractual agreement. We, with they, may to say, when I come down here, I'm going to continue the divine plan of being a celestial catalyst to further the creation of human as we were created the same as. You were not violated in these experiences. Maybe you were. That's a different subject entirely. If you have that issue, contact me. We'll get you into it. I will move you through it. And you'll be done with it. And you will disconnect from that experience, not only mentally and abusive-wise. It will never happen to you again, I promise you. Big words, I promise you. I will help you find yourself in it, and you will raise your vibration and you will no longer see yourself as a victim in that experience. Many of us, because we are on the earth, walking it, not just talking it, we always heard, we, we like teachers who talk the talk, but we like teachers better who walk the walk, walk the talk. Because you are, whether you're just a simpleton, redneck, this person, that person, doesn't matter. Your life on this earth is a living testimony to the truth of the divine plan. You have infinite potential. Hello? That which lives inside of you creates worlds and universes. You have infinite potential to express and be the walking, living testimony of the divine that lives in you. Pretty divinely. 
you probably have children on other planetary stations or starships because of your walking on this earth you have valuable information in formation things become information when you become informed Because you are truly the professor of the human college. Because you are walking on the earth. That is valuable information. Before the ultra and the extraterrestrials fashioned us for the divine call. They want some of your petri dish. Because they, as we want to advance the divine human experience. The thousand years of peace. Here's a piece for you. You have children, very likely. May not be conscious to you. You may not recall it. If you're curious and believe that Keith is not totally insane, actually, I am insane. Because I do everything I can to never live in normalcy. And it's given me vision. It's given me sight. It's given me hope beyond this earth. It's given me the capacity. When I say see, I really mean see. Because this place right here incorporates this. So it's a triangle, is it not? <laughs> Very sacred geometric shape. But what gives me the greatest capacity to see is I'm living and dwelling in the kingdom. At least I'm trying my best. And you could bet cosmically, cosmically, my foot is over and crossing the threshold. So not only do I have a triangle, C and C, it's creating this wholeness in me, which gives me the capacity to see in 360 degree direction. You have children. You are a star seed. And seeds are being grafted from you. Why? I really don't have to explain it to you except share it with you this way. However old you are, let's say for those who are 40 years old and older, still doesn't apply, doesn't mean it doesn't apply to anyone else. When you were a kid, think about your life and the lifestyle and the consciousness of what it was like to be you with your friends in your hometown and how things were back then. Don't judge it. Just look at it. Riding bicycles with your friends. You had a walkie-talkie and you had Barbie dolls and ganip ganop and <laughs> whatever Mattel games you had. Life was simple. Fast forward to now, you have evolved. The world has evolved. That time is gone. It's becoming futuristic. It's cosmic. The world is illuminating. And others are going deeper into sleep. It's just a choice. There's no right or wrong. No one's judging. You're not going to be punished. I don't want to do this for another 26,000 years. Well, Keith, if you die and you go out of time because you go back to spirit, isn't it infinite? I don't want to do this for another 26,000 years. I want to live again, be conscious of my ultra angelic, to use the word, terrestrial nature. Tonight's presentation is initiation. Seeds have been planted all of your life. And seeds have been taken from you all of your life. You walking, living testimony, ultra-terrestrial you. You are part of a greater design than you can possibly imagine. Unless you imagine yourself as integral to the conscious, deliberate design. And the bells and whistles and the bang that begins to happen 
when you plug into that consciously, which you're already plugged into, whether you know it or not, works in your favor, and we're getting to the point of 51%. The age of Aquarius. And when the scale tips in your favor, you will live in divine favor. But it requires your fervor. Karen Renando says, Hello, Jamie. Hello, Wendy. Wendy Kale, I am coming to Homa next week, and I will be playing at casinos on Tunnel Boulevard Thursday night, 8 o'clock to midnight. I'd love to see you. Hi, Claudia. Hi, Donna. Donna, Donna, such the entertainer. Uh, Jesse Berthelot, my sister Mary's in the house. Carolyn says, is altering the mind really altering the ego? Um, no. Yes, that would be a yes or no. Altering the mind means I'm tentatively trying to do better with my life, so I'm going to alter my mind. But if you try to change the monkey in the mind, you're just going to piss him off. But altering the mind in a different way is, I'm going to accept my mind so I can be the observer. So without trying to change the mind forcefully, the mind itself changes. Robert, my bro. Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Carol says, so do we live by God's will or our will with all this power. I can tell you right now in this hour that has to be one of the most amazing questions that was ever posed to me. In fact, Carolyn, I'm quite humbled by your question. So do we live by God's will or by our by our will with all of this power? Hi, Vicky. Robert Garris says, dig it. You know what? I'm not going to just fire off at the mouth and give you Keith's opinion. I'm going to play a quick song. I'm going to come back and I'm going to vessel that answer. Carolyn, again, that was a very delicious question. There is so much profundity, profound heart, intellect in that question. Equally to, equal to any question that was that moving to me. She asked, so do we live by God's will or our will with all of this power? That is fucking phenomenal. Lavender Soul, Angel of Love. We all need a presence in our bedroom that says everything's going to be all right. It always has been. You celestial being you, Lavender Soul.
Welcome, dear ones, beloveds. The question has deliciously been posed. Is it God's will or your will? Why do you separate yourself in this manner? Has this not been the cause of all of your quandary? Humans, so you think you are? You are the star of all. You have raised the bar... <laughs> Nothing happens outside the will of God, not even using your own will. But what you are dealing with is karma. That's not God's will, the collective of the all, for you. God's will is not for you to induce suffering. Karma and the way you know it to be as a return or a backlash or a punishment for something you have brought forth. It's not what karma really is in the first place. Karma means action and consequence, end of story. 
But in your word usage of karma, that's not God's will. Nor is it your will. It's your ignorance. Wow, what a burst of light you have just been given from vessel to you. This sounds so strange to me and I'm afraid. Because you're ignorant. Whoever you may be, if this applies, then it applies purposefully. Do those shoes fit? Don't take it offensively. Take it lovingly. I've learned something now. Nothing exceeds God's permission. Even your self-induced suffering. Humans. The humans you being called is not a belittlement. It's a level of raising you up by bringing you inward so you can move forward. Are you doing that? At least to the best of your conscious ability. Do you need help? Contact the vessel. It's not a selling point. But do you want to invest in something worthwhile? Find anyone that you resonate with, regardless. Your intention of expanding into a higher level of will, Yah, the heart, God, will, Na, the conscious discernment, using your God-given intellect when in balance, and Va, the backbone, to carry this out, Yanava. Hence, the channel has named himself Yanava. Y and V. You are all this name. He chose to, quote, claim it as his own. It resonates with him. It resonates with you. Does it not? Yanava. Yanava. It's ancient. God's will. God's will. Why do you separate yourself from your will from God's will? High, low, as above, so below, on forever it will go. Buck or doe, to or fro, come or go. Live in the flow, and yo, dog, as you say in your slang, you will find yourself in a bang of light, power, delight, and might. So the questions, regardless of what they are and are who from, can be very wise slash dumb. The fact that you pose a question insinuates you don't know. That's a beautiful idea. Always declare you don't know, which makes you humble and open and vulnerable to something that can flow. That is understood. Put that aside. When you fake it until you make it, as you say, walk around cocky, to use a word. Confident, a better word. As if you know everything, equally you are in, 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 inviting something to live mainstream in your consciousness. You are not separate from God's will. You can either choose health or choose ill. It's all your will, which is God's will, that you are lowercase g gods doing the best that you can, which we on this side of the veil as spirit hope that you are. To graduate once you have integrated and have initiated yourselves into higher levels of divine experience, it requires an adherence and a coherence of energy. The vessel does not like to be acknowledged Regardless, Spirit will tell you every day, every moment, from waking to sleeping, God, Spirit, Consciousness, Source, Betterment, Higher Will, Understanding, Alignment is always 
there and it's present. He awaits in the morning to plant his feet on the floor to declare, as I plant my feet on the floor, descend unto me forevermore. And that you can be sure of if you do for yourself, you yourself will fall into the higher will. But will you do it? Very simple, but yet powerful question. What is the difference between God's will and yours? <laughs> Spirit is going to leave that for you to decide. When you realize the Master, the Christ, the Buddha, or the Jedi is you, then will you be able to conquer all of your demons, your Darth Vedas, so forth and so on. Your life is not so far gone that you have forgotten that which is sacred to you. Are you willing to walk through hell to experience your ultra terrestrialness, your divine state? It requires you to wipe the slate clean. Tough though it is. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not about you thinking. It's not about your processing. It's not about your intelligence. It's not about any of that. It's not about you figuring it out. It's about you stopping it all. And when you do, suddenly, through the silence, the new world will appear. Thank you very much. Yana Ba here. Initiation, integration, and graduation. This is where we are. All scripture talks about this time right now. It points to this time. Are you living in this time? Are you living in your precious moment? The reason I did not go back to me vesseling with me on the screen as a person is because I wanted it to be so you can actually integrate, initiate, and graduate to using the ears. You are loved beyond measure. You are loved beyond pleasure. Center of Light TV, initiation, integration, and graduation. I do what I do because you are my elation. Do you feel me? I love you beyond measure. Whatever's troubling you, it's not important. If you need me, want to talk, I'm here. Peace, love, and light. The star child, star seed that you are. <laughs>